In this video, we're going to dive deeper into validators in Pydantic. We're going to understand the order in which Pydantic applies validators to our fields. We're going to learn what a root validator is in Pydantic. And we're going to learn how to apply functions that run before the default Pydantic validation. Finally, we're going to learn how to apply a validator to each item in a collection of data, which might be a list in Python or a set or a dictionary. We're going to learn how to define validators that work on each item in those objects. So let's get started. I've written a blog post on this topic. I'll leave a link to this below the video. And what we're going to do is recap what we did before. So what I'm going to do is open VS Code. And I have the code from the previous video open here. And what we have is a Pydantic model called student. And the student model has two validator functions applied to particular fields on the model. We have a validator applied to the modules field. And the modules field, as you can see in line 23, it's a list of module objects. And module is a pydantic class as well. It's a pydantic model. So this is a list of nested modules that are applied to a student. So a student will have many modules. And this is the data structure that creates that relationship. We have a validator function, which is defined using this validator decorator that you can import from Pydantic. And below that one, we have another validator that's applied to the date of birth field. And as said before, in these functions, you can apply any logic you want. So this is the basic way of defining validators in Pydantic. It's going to cover most use cases. You just define a Python function and you decorate it with this validator decorator. And the argument that's passed to the validator is the field to which the logic will be applied. Now, if we look at the signature of this function, you can see that the first parameter to the function is the class. So that implies that validator functions in Pydantic, they are class methods, they're not instance methods. So we don't use self as an argument here, we're referring instead to the actual class itself. And the second argument to the function is the value that we're actually validating. So when we use a Pydantic model to validate some incoming data, for the field that we're applying the validator to, in this case, date of birth, this is the value of that field in the incoming data. So that is the second parameter to the function. But it turns out these validator functions, they can accept an additional argument that we're going to see now. And on the Pydantic documentation, it gives you some things to note on these validators. For example, you can add any subset of the following arguments to the signature. And the one we are going to look at is values. And that is a dictionary containing the name to value mapping of any previously validated fields. Now, if we go back to the classes here, it turns out that the validation in Pydantic is applied in the order that we define these fields. So for example, any validators on the ID field are going to be applied first. If the ID field is validated successfully, we'll move on to the name field, then date of birth and so on. So it's applied top to bottom in the order that you define the fields. And we can see this if we define another validator. So I'm going to define one for the GPA field. So let's go just below the config class and we'll write a validator decorator. And we're applying this to the GPA field and we can write the function called validate GPA here. Now, like the other functions, it takes the class as its first argument and the value being passed in as a second argument. We're now going to add a third argument called values here, and that's going to contain all the previously validated values. So this is just a dummy function. We're just going to print out the values dictionary that's coming in, and then we're just going to return the value for the GPA. Now, if we go back to the main.py file, this is where we define a URL. We get the data from that URL and convert it to JSON. And I'm going to remove this statement here and we have a for loop that is basically converting each record in the data to a student pydantic model and then it's printing out a particular field in this case I'm going to change that and just print the model out now I'm going to run the main.py file and I'm going to bring a terminal over to do that and we have a virtual environment activated with pydantic here and we can run python main.py in order to actually run that file and what we're going to get is the models printed out so instead of printing out all of the models what we actually want to see here is we want to see the values that's coming through for the GPA field for each record. So I'm going to actually remove this print statement to the model. And let's go back to the terminal, clear that out and rerun this script. Now what you can see is for each record in the data, we are getting the values that have already been validated, printed out to the terminal. So you can see the ID, which is a UUID object. We get the name of the student and we also get the student's date of birth. If we go back to our models.py file, you can see that this validator for the GPA, that's the one that prints this out. This is printing out these values for the records that come before the GPA and the ordering of the fields. So this is just emphasizing that the validation is occurring from top to bottom with the order that you define these fields. Now that can be fine for some use cases, but sometimes your validator functions, they require the values of other fields. For example, if the GPA required the department value, 
then we would need to reorder these fields so that GPA comes after department. But then the department field may also be dependent on the value of another field, for example, the name. So this can get very tricky if you have a lot of fields and there's got to be a better way than simply relying on the ordering. Now, one solution to this is to use root validators. And root validators, they run validation on the entire model's data after the individual validator functions have all run. So what we're gonna do is create a contrived example here. And let's say that we only want to accept students in the science and engineering department whose GPA is greater than or equal to three. So for science and engineering students, unless your GPA is above three, we're gonna reject them. What we can do is we can import at the top the root validator decorator. So that comes directly from Pydantic. We're importing the root validator. And let's scroll down and we're gonna define another function here and we're going to call this function validate GPA and department. And that takes the class again as the first argument, as well as the values. And the values is a populated dictionary containing all of the validated values for every single field in our Pydantic model. So that's the function for the body of that. Let's just pass for now. And we're going to decorate this with the root validator decorator. And that will tell Pydantic that this will be run after all of the validators for the individual fields. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna extract from the values dictionary, the GPA and the department. So let's create a variable called department and we're gonna use the values.get function and we can get the department value from that dictionary. And then I'm gonna copy that line below and we can rename this to GPA and we're gonna get the GPA field from that dictionary. And now we can perform the validation here. Let's now create two Boolean variables that we're gonna use in an if statement. First of all, we're gonna check if the student is part of the science and engineering department. We can do that by checking if the department that we've extracted is equal to the department enum.science and engineering.value. So remember the department has a value that's set to an enum here and we're accessing the science and engineering field on that enum and we're getting the text value from that and we're checking whether or not what we've extracted is equal to that value. So that's the first Boolean variable. We'll create another one below and we're gonna say valid GPA and we can set that equal to GPA being greater than or equal to 3.0. So that's our two Boolean variables. We're now gonna check if the student is part of the science department and if they are, we're going to reject them if they do not have a valid GPA. So let's now add another if statement here. And if they don't have a valid GPA, what we're gonna do is we're going to actually raise a value error here. And we can pass a message to the value error and we're gonna say GPA not high enough for science and engineering. Now that's the case where we have a problem and we want to raise a value error. If we get to the end of this function without raising that value error, what we want to do for a root validator is just return all of the validated values. So we can return values and that's the end of this root validator function. If we now go back to main.py, we're gonna keep this code largely the same, but in the for loop, when we convert the student to a pedantic model, we're going to surround that with a try statement. And I'm gonna tab these across. We're trying to convert the data that's coming in to a student pedantic model. And if we manage to convert that student, we're going to print a message out with the student's GPA and also the department. But we also want to catch the exception. So we're gonna use the accept statement here and we can pass a value error as E. And what we want to do is just print the message that's coming from that exception. We can do that with the print E statement. And we can now run this to see what kind of output we get. Before we do that, I'm actually gonna remove this print statement for the GPA validator that we used a second ago. And we can close models.py and I'm gonna bring up the terminal now. If we run the main.py script, we should see the output. And you can see for the first record, we get a GPA of three and we get the science and engineering department. But for the second record, we're getting a validation error and that's that the GPA is not high enough for science and engineering. Now let's have a look at the source data. Now this is the source data set here. I'll leave a link to this below the video. You can see the records in this list of data. We have the first record, which remember had a GPA of three and also had Department of Science and Engineering. For the second record, we also have Science and Engineering, but the GPA is 2.5 and that's too low to actually pass the test that we've just defined. So that is why that second record is being rejected and we get the message from our value error. So the root validator it allows us to compare different values for different fields in the Pydantic model. And we can access those previously validated values within this values argument that's passed to the root validator. And again, we can perform any logic we want within the body of that function. Now, if you want a comparison to Django, this is kind of similar to a Django form. In Django forms, we can validate individual fields. And for example, if we had a field called name, we would define a function called clean underscore name and that would allow us to validate the values that are coming in for that field. 
So the clean field name functions are similar to the Pydantic validators. On the other hand, the root validator is similar to the Django clean function. So the Django clean function has access to all of the values coming in for the fields of the form. And that allows you to perform comparisons based on more than one field. So if you know Django, you can think of root validators as being kind of analogous to the clean function. So let's move on. We're now going to cover pre-validators in Pydantic. Now, sometimes you want a function to run before Pydantic applies any validations to a field. An example of this is that you might want to join up the elements of a list or a tuple before you apply a validator to that field. Or conversely, you might want to take a CSV delimited string, for example, and split that into elements in a Python list. Now, these kind of transformations of data, they must be applied before the Pydantic validator. If the validator, for example, is expecting an array, you must split the string before you send the value to that function. Now, defining a validator function that runs before normal validation, you can actually achieve this with the normal validator decorator. And we can do that by passing a keyword argument to that called pre and setting that equal to true. And as you can see in VS Code, when you apply this pre parameter, it defines whether or not the validator should be called before the standard validator. Now to get an example of this, what I'm going to do is go back to the GitHub repository and we're going to now use the student version 3.json file. And you can see if we scroll down that we've added a new field to each record in this data and that's the tags field. And this is a comma separated bit of text containing different tags that you might want to apply to a student, for example, motivated, skilled and hardworking. And if you scroll down, you might have other tags such as hipster, lazy and slacker. So each student now has a set of tags and we're going to change our main.py script to actually fetch that new data set. So instead of student version 2, we're going to set it to version 3. And of course, because we have a new field, we need to add that to our Pydantic model. So let's add a field called tags. And this is just going to be a list of strings. Now, what we're saying here is that we want the tags to be a list of strings in the Pydantic model. But as you can see on the API or on the GitHub dataset, the tags are actually coming through as a comma separated string. So if we want to use a list of tags here, we need to split that string on the comma so that we get back a Python list of strings instead. So let's go down here and what I'm going to do is remove this GPA validator and I'm going to validate this tags field now instead. And what I'm going to do is show an example of this that's not going to work, but it is going to demonstrate the use of pre-validators and we're going to fix this in a second. So let's call the function split tags. And because this is a normal validator, it takes the class and the actual value as parameters. And let's say we want to take the string of tags coming back and we want to split that by the comma. So what we can do is return value.split and what we're going to split on is the comma here. And before we run this, let's also just comment out our root validator now. We don't need that anymore. And we can bring up the terminal and run this script. Now, when we get the results, you see that we have a validation error for all of our records and it's on the tags field. The problem is that the value is not a valid list. So if we go back to models.py, you can see that we are expecting a list of strings here. But again, we're getting back some text comma separated text that we need to split into a string. So the splitting does not work on a normal validator function. And the reason for this is that Pydantic's normal validators that check the actual types, they will run before your custom validator functions. So if you want to apply some logic like this that will run before Pydantic's default validation, you can pass the pre equals true parameter to the validator. If we go back to the terminal now and rerun this, you can see that we no longer get those errors and we're getting back the student Pydantic models. So just by passing pre equals true to the validator function, we're then able to apply this split call before the Pydantic default validation. And that will then return a list, which is what's expected by the default validator. And we can then proceed as normal. And just to see that this is actually a list of strings, we can go back to main.py and I'm going to change the print statement here. I'm going to print out model.tags. Let's execute that now and we get back all of the tags for each student. Now, one thing you might notice about the tags is that we have a leading white space at the tags that are not the first tag. So for the first tag in each list, it's totally fine. But for the others, we have this leading white space. And that's because of the way we're splitting this. But we can add a field to the Pydantic config class for the student model. And we're going to use a field here called any string strip white space. And we can set that to true. And what that's going to do is then remove any leading or trailing white space. And because it's in the config class, that's going to be applied to any field where it makes sense to strip white space. So any kind of string field 
we go back to the terminal and rerun this, you can see that that fixes the problem with that leading white space. So that shows how we can perform some logic before the pydantic default validation occurs. We're now going to finish this video by showing how to run pair item validators. So as you can see in this list, we have some students that have a tag of slacker. Let's say that we want to throw a validation error if we get a student who's a slacker in this data set and we want to reject that student. So let's go back to VS Code and I'm going to scroll down and we already have this validator for the tags field, but this is the one that's applied before the default validation. But what we're going to do now is define another validator function. And again, it's going to be applied to the tags field, but we're going to pass a second keyword argument here. And that's going to be the each item equals true keyword argument. So let's scroll down and define the body of this function. We're going to call the function remove slackers. And just as above, it takes the class and the value coming in as arguments. So like the name implies, each item equals true will apply the validation logic to each item within the field that we're passing in. So we can simply write an if statement here and check if the value is equal to slacker. And if it is, what we can do is raise another value error and we can pass a message into that value error. If not, we can simply return the value and proceed as normal. So each item equals true will result in this function being applied to each tag in this list one at a time. Whereas a normal validator that doesn't have each item will simply receive the list of tags as an argument. And then, well, you could write a for loop to go through these, but the each item equals true is a little bit cleaner in my opinion. And it is true that often you will be dealing with lists, sets, dictionaries, tuples in your data. So when you need to validate each item in those data structures, you can use this construct here. So let's now run this code and we can see if this works. I'm going to clear the terminal and rerun main.py. And you can see now that we are getting validation errors for students. And that's for any student who is a slacker in this data set. So these are a couple of different techniques you can use in Pydantic when you need to perform validation, but you're not simply validating the raw value of a field. If you use the root validator that we defined here, you can access all of the values for each field in the data. So this is important when the value of one field might be contingent on the value of another and you need to perform validation based on that logic. We've also seen the validator for tags where we have this pre equals true argument which applies the validator before Pydantic's default validation and that allows you to perform data transformations and any other kind of logic you want to apply before the default validation. In this case, we performed a transformation where we took a comma separated string of tags and we split them into a Python list where each element in the list was one of the tags. And as well as pre-validators with the pre equals true keyword argument, we can also pass each item equals true to the validator decorator. And this is then going to apply the logic of the function to each item in a sequence of data or a mapping of data. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. We've done four Pydantic videos now. I've not got any more planned on just using Pydantic alone, but hopefully in the future, we'll do some videos using Fast API and other technologies that rely on Pydantic under the hood. But if you do have any more requests for videos, just let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.